Today on Judge Faith, it's time for accountability when a teenage boy breaks into this woman's home. He says, I'm going to confess. My brother and his friends broke into your house last night. I said, I know. I'm going to talk to your dad right now, though. I offered her money. Like, several times I offered her money. It's what not happened? Like, That's not true. I offered her, I offered you money two times in my living, in my driveway. You told me not to give you any money. You're lucky that she didn't press charges and that he's not in juvenile jail right now. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Erica Baker is suing her neighbor for the value of items she says his son stole from her home during a break-in. She is accompanied by her daughter, Courtney. But defendant Joe Nun Lee says he offered the plaintiff money and she refused to accept it. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Baker versus Nunley. Thank you, Barbara. Erica Baker? Yes. You are suing the defendant, Joe Nunley, for $600 for the amount you say his son stole from you during a home invasion robbery? Yes. Okay, and you also have your daughter, Courtney, with you here today? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so tell me what happened. On May 24th, 2014, um, my home was broken into. Earlier in the evening, my husband and I had been out to celebrate his birthday. Our children were at a relative's house. Um, when we got home, it was about 1.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. We noticed the sofa cushions were standing up on the sofa, but didn't, it didn't arise any initial suspicion. We go upstairs, and there's a chest in our bedroom that the TV sits on top of. The contents of the chest were all over the bed, all over the floor. Mm -hmm. um, there was a um, jewelry box that was open on the bed, and just all kinds of stuff. So that's arrived. when you knew someone had been in your home? Someone had been in my home. Mm -hmm. So initially, I'm scared to death. I mean, that's, because that has to be pretty unsettling. I have to no walk idea in. if the person right. is still there. Right. So mm -hmm. we run downstairs to see where the point of entry could have been, and the dining room window was. Uh, broken into, glass everywhere, was standing mm -hmm. wide open. So um, I call the police. My husband is looking around the house to see if there's um, anyone still there, because we have no idea. Right. Please come. We um, file a report with him that we've had a break in. Now, were your kids, they were still out? My kids with were the at relatives? a, a okay. relative's house. They were going to be there for the entire And evening. how many kids do you have? Two. Two, okay. So the next day, Courtney is outside with. Um, Joe has an 11-year-old son. He's outside, and a 16-year-old. And both kids were back over the next day and playing. At some point, the 16-year-old leaves, and the... And you have a conversation, Courtney, with the 11-year-old? Yes. Defendant's son? Yes. Did you know the defendant? Is he a neighbor that you know? He yes. is a neighbor, but we did... Well, she knows the kids. I didn't know Mr. Nunley before um, this incident. Okay, so, Courtney, the next day, you have a conversation with the defendant's son. What happens? What does he tell you? With the 11 year old, he came outside asking questions about the break in. He was asking, we have a shed in our backyard with a lot of stuff, and he asked about some dirt bikes that were inside. He asked about uh, a cracked phone, my old phone, that I haven't used in a long time. He wouldn't have known about that, but he asked about that cell phone. What did he, what did he say about it? He said, I thought your phone was cracked. But that was my S3. I have a S4 right now. I... So he just knew things about yeah. the burglary that you found to be suspicious. Yeah. Okay. And what what happens after that? As he's asking questions, he said, "Why why were your lights on upstairs last night?" I was like, "How'd you know my lights were on?" He said, "Well, I saw them." I said, "You can't see the lights from your house." And he said, "Well, I went down there last night when I heard the window break." And then I was like, okay, He whatever. said he went down to your house when he heard the window break. Yes. <laughs> okay. I was walking with my friend that was there while he was talking. I was walking with my friend, and I was like, that sounded really suspicious. That couldn't have possibly 
all happened. So then my friend was like, well, yeah, the 16-year-old asked me the night before if my father was going to be home because they all knew that me and my brother weren't going to be at home. Well, he was like, well, I guess that means Mr. Baker isn't going to be home. And I, and then, yeah. And the 16-year-old is the 11-year-old's brother? Yes. Okay. So then you call your mom and you tell her about this conversation. And you yes. say something's up with these kids. They know something about our house being broken into. What was taken from your home? A couple of laptop computers missing, a um, pair of uh, Beats by Dre headphones, mm -hmm. um, many electronic items, a couple of iPods, and missing like four cell phones from where we've upgraded from one phone to another. Um, so a lot of electronic items, stuff that they could, I guess, easily carry out of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have the police report? I do have May the police report. May I see it? Okay. When did you have a conversation with the defendant about his sons, and when did you find out that they were actually involved? Um, when Courtney called me and said that she'd had a suspicious conversation with the 11-year-old, I came outside to talk to him. I asked him point blank, did your brother break into my home last night? He said, no, they were planning to, but he didn't do it. I said, okay. So at that point, when he made that statement, I started in the direction of Mr. Nunley's residence to go talk to him. Mm -hmm. So as I'm walking, the 11-year-old is walking with me. He's telling me different things. He says, um, all of your, your lights were on last night. I said, how do you know that? And he says, oh, um, when I was in my house, I heard the glass break, so I ran over to your house to see what happened. I said, you're standing in your house, and you hear glass break. And so he says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, how old are you? And he said he was about 11. I said, um, so you leave your house. I said, what time was it, 11, 12 o'clock at night? And he agreed that it was. I found out later it was around 10, 10, 30. I said, who, was, who were you with? I said, where were your parents? He said, they were out. I said, well, who was watching you? He said, his 16-year-old brother. I said, and where was he? He said, in the bathroom. I said, okay. So I'm still walking. He's still running be beside me. By the time I get to his doorstep, he breaks down. He says, Ms. Baker, I'm just going to be honest with you. He says, I'm going to confess. My brother and his friends broke into your house last night. I said, I know. I'm going to talk to your dad right now, though. So I ring the doorbell. Mr. Nunley comes out. At that point, his son runs in the house. Um, I'm standing there, and I'm talking to him, and I'm telling him what took place last night. The 11-year-old runs back out of the house with my daughter's headphones in his hand. The Beats by Dre headphones? The Beats by Dre. But there were two pair missing, one of my daughters, one of my husband's. I got my daughter's back. Okay, so at this point, you know that they have property exactly. from, from your home. All um, right. So I'm standing there, and Mr. Nunley's demeanor sort of changed, like, oh, my God, I can't believe he would do that. Why would he do that? I just bought him a pair of headphones. He said, I just got him a pair of red ones. Coming up on Judge Faith, he said he'd pay to make her go away. I was only giving her money to just to try to make it go away. Because you don't, think he, him you don't think he participated in the burglary? I mean, you should be glad no, she's not going to no, the police, just so you know. The house. She's coming to said. you as a parent You're because right. she doesn't want him to get arrested right. and have a record at 16 years old for a violent felony. Plaintiff Erica Baker is suing her neighbor for the value of items stolen from her home. Defendant Joe Nunn Lee says he offered the plaintiff money and she refused to accept it. What's going on, Mr. Nunn Lee? Um, like she said, she came to the house and um, my son went in the house and got the, um, the earphones or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when I talked to my 16-year-old, he admitted that they had uh, planned on trying to break in, but he said he chickened out at the last minute. He didn't go inside of the house. Mm -hmm. And the property that he had, uh, uh, the other young men, when they came out, they couldn't, I guess they couldn't take it home because their parents was at home. So he kept the merchandise. And when she told me about it, I, I, um, like she said, my 11 year old went in the house and got it. And when he so brought it back outside. So your 16 year old went to the plaintiff's home. Yes. According to you, he stood outside yes. while his friends broke the window in her home, went inside, stole property, come back out and give property to your 16-year-old that he knows is stolen property. Just so you know, under the law right. for burglary and robbery, he's as much a part of that burglary as the other individuals who went inside of her home. Has he been in trouble before? Oh, uh, he got in a fight in school. Was he suspended? No. Where is he now? Where is he today? Why isn't he here? He's at school. You don't think it was important enough for him to come to court today? Um, 
No, not really. I didn't just want to be exposed to that because, like I said, he didn't go in. So you went to the parents See, I, of these what various... What happened is that she gave us a list of stuff that was missing, and everything that was on the list was returned, you know what I mean, including the money. Everything that was on the list was how returned. Do you, how do you know that? Because she gave me a list, and everything on the list was returned. You know, I have a copy of the list. I have a list of the things that are missing, the things that are returned. The things that are returned is a very short list from what's still missing. So if you'd like to see a copy of that. Yes, I would. So how many teenagers do we know of that were involved in this? There were three teenagers involved altogether. How did you find out about the other two young men involved, and did you have conversations with their parents as well? When Mr. Nunley's 16-year-old son got home, Mr. Nunley um, confronted him in the front yard of his home. Um, so they're on the front lawn. He's confronting him. He told his father who the other two boys were that were involved. Mr. Nunley said that he knew who they were because he'd taken them home the night before. I found out later that the boys had stashed merchandise around the side of my house, and two of the boys came back the next day. Possibly they were gathering items then. So you found out, you find out that these three kids, around 16 years old, mm -hmm. bro broke into your home, and you go to all of the parents and ask them, to, did you call the police and tell the police that you had discovered who broke into your home? No. At the point I found out who it was, because we knew the boys, we did not initially contact the police again. Why? Well, I wanted to talk to the parents. I wanted to get just get my items back. Mm -hmm. um, the emotions were running very high. It was scared. I was very upset that someone I knew could violate me in this way, someone I thought I was friends with. So Mr. Nunley took us, took me and my husband around to the other two parents' houses. We confronted their parents and um, everyone agreed, I guess, to try to get the merchandise back. And this was the very next day, so I had high hopes. I got a couple things back. Mr. Nunley brought me back my uh, laptop computer. He said it was stashed under his son's mattress. And his wife was standing outside talking to me the entire time he's inside flipping his son's room that she'd been broken in on and how it made her feel and that his 16-year-old knew that and for him to violate someone in this manner was unacceptable. Next on Judge Faith. You have not offered to give me any money. You, the day I, I told... offered to give you money twice. You, why would I turn your money down? I did not press charges against the boys. I don't know why you told the, the turn the money down. Are you down. kidding? You just said you I turned the money down. I did not press charges against the boys because I did not want them in the system. Plaintiff Erica Baker is suing her neighbor for the value of items stolen from her home. Defendant Joe Nun Lee says his son didn't participate in the break-in. So what did you decide about the items that you did not get back? You made a list. You came up with a certain price. Correct. Right, I, that you wanted the boys or their parents to pay. In and order what for happened? And I offered her money. I offered her money, like, several times I offered her money. It's what not happened? Like, That's not true. I offered her... I offered you money two times in my, in my driveway. You told me not to give you any money. Like, so what happened? Mr. Nunley, when I see him, pats his pockets. I haven't seen any money yet. He pats his pockets every time I see him as if he's going to give me money. I did tell him not to give me money on one occasion. Twice she told me, yeah, I was going to give her the money. Why did you do that? June 24th was 30 days after the incident. All the families were supposed to have made payment by that date. What payment were you asking for? The entire amount. What's the entire amount? $600. $600 so, each? No, $600 each, yes. $1,800 for me to replace the items that I did not get back. Um, and I didn't sign it. You did not sign the agreement. Okay. You wanted him to sign some kind of agreement saying what? With the paperwork that I just gave you that has the items listed on there, um, there's a place up above for each parent to sign their, write their son's name, sign at the bottom and have their son sign. Um, and that is to say, this did happen and we do agree to pay you. And it says in But that's why I didn't sign it, because I didn't agree that he did it. I only agreed to pay you because I understood your pain. I wanted it to go but away. But you didn't pay me, Joe. Because uh, you never gave sir, me a chance. Sir, you, didn't agree, you, didn't agree, me you didn't agree to what? For him to sign saying that he'd burglarized no, the I home? No, I didn't... Yeah, that, that he burglarized the home and I was taking... I was only giving her money to just to try to make it go away because I didn't want he, him to get Because you don't think him. he participated in the burglary? I mean, you should be glad no, she's not going to no, the police, just so you know. I believe that he went into the house. She's coming to you as a parent because she doesn't want him to get arrested and have a 
record at 16 years old for a violent felony. Because when you break into someone's home at 16 years old, that is a violent felony. I understand that, but I trust You can get up to 15 in. years in prison, and she's coming to you as a parent because she doesn't want to go to the police to have your son arrested. Correct. I you, understand You've got that. a problem, sir. See, let me explain something about the law to you. It does not matter that your son, if, if he didn't go into the home, I think they all went in, but it doesn't matter that he didn't go into the home. He is still just as responsible for that burglary because you know what they're gonna say? He was the lookout. He was standing outside. He was the one making sure that they weren't coming back home while, while his friends are inside taking her property. Well, At 16 all, years well, old, all of her stuff back. you're focused on the wrong thing, sir. You need to be focused, first of all, $600, Pay the six hundred dollars, but then you need to turn around and focus on your son and why he's that's and why he's breaking right into now. someone's home. That's what that's what I'm trying to figure out right because now. Because right now, on. because it sounds like you're trying to minimize his role. There, there's no minimization here. The only thing you should be standing here today is saying, I know my son did this. It was a horrible thing. And he's there are consequences for his actions. He should be going to school church and coming back home and picking up a rake. I would make him pay me every dime of that $600 you have to pay her. It shouldn't come out of your pocket. It should come out of his pocket. Your Honor, I have a apology letter from his 16-year-old son apologizing for entering my home. Let me he, see the letter, please. That he wrote. I know I ruined our friendship and you look at me different now. I'm not asking you not to press charges because that's up to you. I violated your private environment. I just say, I'm sorry. I don't have the key you were looking for. I really don't. I'm not gonna come back to your house again. He was absolutely a part of this and inside of her home and there's no way you should try to minimize his actions. You've got to address this because uh, your son, if he keeps doing this, let me tell you, you're lucky that she didn't press charges and that he's not in juvenile jail right now. And you're also lucky that he wasn't killed because in your state, when you break into someone's home under the Castle Doctrine, they can pull out a gun and use deadly force, shoot the person down, no questions asked. Now, I know you love your son and you care about him, but you've got to start practicing some tough parroting here. You've got to get control of this situation. If you don't stop it now, he is going to prison. He's going to be another black man in prison in this country, a part of a larger statistic. Joe, I'd like to say something to you. <clears throat> this made me feel, I am still afraid all the time. I'm afraid for my children. I'm <clears throat> afraid that your sons have told somebody the layout of my house. They've been in my house and touched my personal things. And it's a violation, a complete violation. And I feel that you're violating me even further, taking me through this entire situation. You have not offered to give me any money. You, the day I, I told- I offered to give you money twice. You, both of the other families have given me money. Why would I turn your money down? I did not press I don't charges know why you against told the, the boys. Are you down. kidding? You just said you I did the not money press down. charges against the boys because I did not want them in the system. I wanted to give them an opportunity not to have to be in the system. And now, Judge Faith rules. Does your son have a job? No, ma'am. Okay, so you need to get him an after-school job, sir. He needs to have his time occupied. So he's not spending his time thinking about the next time he's going to burglarize someone's home. He needs to work. And you make him work for every penny and pay you back the $600. This shouldn't be on you. This should not come out of your pocket. He's 16 years old. Hold him accountable for his actions. Get him a job when you go back to Atlanta. Judgment for the plaintiff in this case, $600.